Hello and welcome to the North Coast Journal Preview. My name is Mad Knight and I will be sitting in for host David Frank today. And I'm here with Jennifer Franco Cahill and Pat Greetson from the North Coast Journal. Welcome guys. Hello. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here. So uh, let's just dive right into it and see uh, what we've got on the cover this week. Well, on the cover this week, it's a fun issue. Um, for once, we're not doing, you know, what do we usually call it? Our hate and sadness. Mm -hmm. every week. Um, this is the Flash Fiction 2019. Every year we do a contest where people write in with stories that are 99 words or fewer. And Flash Fiction is, you know, it's, it's a wonderful, fun genre. And there are different, like people say it goes up to 500, or there are a lot of different categories of Flash Fiction, but the 99 words is a really concise format, and you'd be surprised what people can get in there. It's, it's quite something. We did a show called Sh Short Story Short Show. Yeah. And we had Neil Tarpey. I don't know. Oh if he, yeah, I don't he's know a if past he winner. Through. Yeah. He's a and flash he, fiction guru. He did flash, uh, some flash fiction for us. It was really great stuff. Yeah, he's great. He's actually got a book. Is it called something? Lightning. Lightning flashes or something like that. It has yeah. the word lightning in it, and. Um, which makes sense because he works at a very fast and brief burst. And yeah. uh, I love the format; it's really great. Yeah, it is a great format. And what I love too is this year we narrowed it down so that people can only send three stories a piece, and that means that um, we had. I thought maybe our batch would shrink, you know, um, but in fact, our batch kind of grew in mm -hmm. that we had a lot more people entering. Um, the number of submissions stayed roughly the same, but there were a lot more people, and the stories were still wild as ever. And um, awesome. yeah, as I'm reading through them every year, everybody in the office can hear me sort of shouting <laughs> and yeah, and laughing and reacting. And, yeah. Yes, um, nice. it's a lot for them. You guys really go through it. Not as much so as when we were all judges and all read through all of the entries. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lot more noise. Um, <laughs> But our winner this year, interestingly enough, so we do these all anonymously. Oh, um, okay. So we make a, a giant pile of them with uh, no names attached, and we read through them. And our judges, who are wonderful. It's like the cellist uh, auditioning behind the blind sort of <laughs> thing. Exactly. Like <laughs> and um, <laughs> so our wonderful judges include Dave Holper, who okay. is the know, new and inaugural Eureka Poet Laureate. Who also participated in the show that I mentioned before. Yeah, nice. he's fantastic. Yeah. He like, and he's such a genuinely nice guy. And his family is talented. His daughter is a really talented poet oh, as well. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. They're nice, talented people. It's, oh, yeah. who can stand it? Um, <laughs> and then uh, the ladies from Booklegger, Nancy yep. Short and Jen McFadden. Know them. So they come and they read through the whole batch. And they actually worked as a team. And every year they come up with their five favorites. Awesome. And Joanne Bauer, she formerly of the Humboldt County Children's Library. She was the children's librarian for many years. And she still does the um, Children's Author Festival. Okay. And between all of us, it's a really diverse group of tastes. However, this year we overlapped quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And one of the stories that we overlapped on turned out to be our winner. Um, and it's called Grand Canyon. And it is by somebody who has freelanced for us, Calvin Trujillo. And, Colin Trujillo. oh, sorry, Colin Trujillo, my apologies. And we did not recognize him. Oh. There was no clue. There was nothing in there that was like, oh, this is somebody you know. Um, but it's, it's really a lovely story about visiting someone um, whose memory is failing uh, due to age related dementia and recounting a memory and. Um, having that moment of maybe recognition, maybe not, that I think a lot of people can identify with. Um, and he's got some lovely details in there, and I urge you to read and reread it. It's a, it's a lovely story. I will. It sounds like a good antidote to the driving uh, you know, madness that we've got, got yeah. going usually. It is, and it's a really good batch of stories this year. It um, is. And they, they kind of cover the spectrum. Some it's very nice. Poignant ones, some very funny ones. Yeah, it's nice too because they're they're so brief that you can pick one up, read it, and then go do your thing, and then take a break, read another one, and it's just seconds. You know, I, I bite size. Bite size, exactly. A friend of mine once told me that she was done reading novels because she had discovered that so many of her favorite novelists 
actually were short story writers forced to work in the novel genre for money. Uh -huh. So she was like, I'm just going to read short, short stories, stories from now on. And I think I may have narrowed it down. I'm just going 99. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to read that. So I imagine that there were other things happening uh, besides flash fiction in the news uh, we, this week. Yes, we had a bit of news this week, too. Uh, flash fiction didn't stop at all. Um, I try. Wrote, <laughs> yeah, it was a good try. Um, I wrote a Week in Weed column about uh, the Federal uh, Food and Drug Administration um, coming out with a stern warning about CBD use. Um, and so uh, cannabidiol um, is a uh, der the derivative of uh, cannabis and has, as probably everybody knows, has become wildly popular in kind of wellness markets and the wellness craze. Um, and has been anecdotally ascribed to cure everything from cancer to acne to anxiety to pain and inflammation. It's become kind of this mythical cure-all. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, because of the federal, long-standing federal prohibition, there's been just kind of a dearth of studies to actually show how effective or not or even how dangerous the substance might be. Um, and so uh, it was CBD was legalized federally um, in December, last December, um, as part of the farm bill that also legalized industrial hemp. And so it has started popping up everywhere, and you can find it in everything from like Walgreens to other pharmacies and even gas stations and stuff, and ointments and tinctures and supplements. Um, and so the Food and Drug Administration really has. This is the non psychoactive yes, variety. Yes, yeah. this is the type of cannabidol that does not get you high at all. Um, right. And that's part of the appeal for a lot of people is that they've heard um, kind of some of the larger health benefits of cannabis or purported health benefits of cannabis, um, but don't want to get high. And so they're trying this thing. I got you. Um, and so the Food and Drug Administration just basically issued a really stern warning saying, not only are there a lot of unknowns with CBD, but there haven't been long-term studies about repeated use and about its interaction with other medications and so on and so forth, but also that there's also some indications that it might actually be harmful um, and that the, the only two FDA-approved uh, substances, um, including CBD, are um, seizure treatment, um, or two treatments for seizures, and both of which have been super effective for seizures. Um, but um, in the trials, the FDA conducted trials on those, um, they found that there were liver impacts um, to some patients um, and uh, some other causes from your concern. And so, so do you think it's the, the, the medical claims that they're zeroing in on? The uh, the curing no, cancer and arthritis. No, so they, they've actually issued a separate warning about that, just saying, hey, all these claims are totally unfounded, mm -hmm. and uh, it actually issued some kind of cease and desist letters to a handful of companies that were making these claims. None of them in Humboldt that I noticed. No, none yeah. in Humboldt, yeah, all, all out of the area. There's a couple of California companies, mm -hmm. but none this far north. Um, but uh, this warning is really just saying, hey, there might be some real health impacts, and not, not, not just might CBD not do all the things it is claimed to do, but it actually might adversely help, impact your health. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, And yeah. not just your liver. Not just your liver. There are some other things too, like I said, um, interactions with other drugs, and then there is also a, um, a sperm toxicity issue that is warned mm. about um, that okay. um, has a variety right. of impacts yeah. and can even yeah. carry on to offspring. So yeah. potentially Yikes. some serious stuff. And there was some concern too, for uh, pregnant and was it nursing mothers mm -hmm. or just pregnant mothers? Yeah, pregnant and nursing mothers, um, mm -hmm. and that some of these things might be uh, passed on to male offspring. Mm -hmm. well, so one thing, well, the sense the marketplace has got ahead of the science and the, the, the studies and way ahead of the science. Yeah, yeah and I mean, because there's been this artificial marketplace that has this is built up, this illicit marketplace that has mm -hmm. built up over you know generations now, um, mid federal prohibition. So I mean, this is also a an offshoot of um, the you know, the policy of federal prohibition. Um, not just, you know, um, outlawing the, the sale and use of these substances, but also outlawing the study of them. So, Interesting. That'll be yeah. a good read. So are you still uh, on the uh, movie reviewing uh, desk this, this, this I week? I am. My, uh, our, you know, usual film reviewer, John Bennett, returns uh, this coming week, so everyone can just relax, John is back. <laughs> um, but I got one more shot at it while he was away visiting family, and I got to review Knives Out, which, have you seen it yet? I have not, no. And I'm looking for something to see, so. It's you just... should absolutely go see Knives Out. Okay. Um, I know, it sounds like I just love everything, because <laughs> I loved Parasite last week, but I really loved Knives Out. Um, but I'm a mystery girl. I don't know. Are you a mystery person? Do you? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. certain extent. I don't, do you yeah. mystery? I don't I'm know this about sure. you. Yeah. 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 Agatha Christie, sure. Yeah. yeah. My, my partner is very suspense averse in movies, so I don't get to mystery as often as I might like, oh, but right. I do mystery. See, I'm like, I'm like classic mystery girl. I okay. love a police procedural, yes, but for a classic mystery, what I really want is for some awful old man to get stabbed in his rich, beautiful surrounds, and then for people that I don't care that much about to be suspects, and then for someone to get done for it, and maybe some additional bodies. But uh, Ryan Johnson's take on this genre has the beautiful mansion, has the old man, and has the vicious family. My God, they're vicious. Um, and they're wonderful vicious, too, because it's Jamie Lee Curtis, Don Johnson. I've had no idea Don Johnson. Um, wow. Chris Evans is in it. Um, there's some really wonderful people. Um, and Christopher Plummer is the old man, I but he's not really Plummer. vicious. Yeah. And he's kind of wonderful. And his death sets off a chain of events um, that bring in his uh, home care worker, so his nurse, who is played by uh, Ana de Armas, and she's wonderful, um, gets pulled into this whole mystery, and um, Daniel Craig plays the gentleman detective. Oh, who is cast. Yes, yeah. and it's Daniel Craig being Southern. Okay. Does that trouble you the way it troubles me sometimes? Mm. No, I like it when, you know, because, you know, after Dick Van Dyke in uh, really? Mary Poppins, I think we're owed a few. Really? Yeah. I, sometimes, <laughs> I sometimes feel resentful when British people, well, I guess I knew about Daniel Craig, but I feel resentful finding out that British people are not American. <laughs> like after, you know, a few seasons of The Wire, they tricked you. Mm -hmm. I felt betrayed by Idris. And well, also, uh, what's his name? McNulty. Mm -hmm. I felt betrayed. Um, but it's really great, and it's, it's got all kinds of fun in it, but it also has some serious stuff in it and um, I was gripped and I did not figure it out. Um, I got to the very wow. end and That's was... quite the recommendation. It was pretty great. I'm, I'm fighting with every fiber of my being not to do my Colombo imitation at this point. <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so that's a great recommendation, and, and I'll try and get out and see that. So is there anything else you guys want to add? Um, well, what do we have coming up? Are we? I think we'll leave that a mystery. Ah. <laughs> see where there the is, news takes us. There is a really good recipe uh, for a chestnut stew okay. in here uh, from stew. Wendy Chan. And so it's Wendy Chan, so you know it's going to be good. And strong recommend while we're in the winter mode. Awesome. Yeah. Terrific. Well, I think that's just about going to do it for this week. The North Coast Journal is on newsstands right now. Pick one up, stay informed, stay entertained. Dad and Jennifer, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having us. And we'll Thanks. see you next week.